Thank you for joining our live stream today. We are excited to spend the next few minutes with you. Feel free to leave a like or comment throughout this video and follow us at CFNI on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future CFNI videos. For those watching on Facebook, don't forget to like this page and enable post notifications to stay informed and keep up with daily CFNI content. Enjoy the live stream. CFNI is a place where you can really learn what community is. I really had no good idea of what it meant to have an intimate relationship with God. Ever since I've been here, it's just been such a beautiful experience of like realizing and discovering who I am as a child of God and realizing how I can be an impact in my friends' lives and other people's lives and how my friends' lives have been an impact on me. You can learn what friendship is. You learn about your connection with God and your relationship with God. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about CFNI. You're a world changer. Come get trained. applied for CFNI. I was in the midst of a really deep depression. I was four months post-suicide attempt and I knew only God could fill the void in my heart. Now being in my fifth semester, I know what my identity is. It's on what the Lord calls me, what he says I am in the word. One word to sum up the CFNI experience is love. You're a world changer. Come get trained. joining our live stream today. We are excited to spend the next few minutes with you. Feel free to leave a like or comment throughout this video and follow us at CFNI on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future CFNI videos. For those watching on Facebook, don't forget to like this page and enable post notifications to stay informed and keep up with daily CFNI content. Enjoy the live stream.
Thank you for joining our live stream today. We are excited to spend the next few minutes with you. Feel free to leave a like or comment throughout this video and follow us at CFNI on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future CFNI videos. For those watching on Facebook, don't forget to like this page and enable post notifications to stay informed and keep up with daily CFNI content. Enjoy the live stream. CFNI is a place where you can really learn what community is. I really had no good idea of what it meant to have an intimate relationship with God. Ever since I've been here, it's just been such a beautiful experience of like realizing and discovering who I am as a child of God and realizing how I can be an impact in my friends' lives and other people's lives and how my friends' lives have been an impact on me. You can learn what friendship is, you learn about your connection with God and your relationship with God, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about CFNI. You're a world changer. Come get trained. applied for CFNI. I was in the midst of a really deep depression. I was four months post suicide attempt and I knew only God could fill the void in my heart. Now being in my fifth semester, I know what my identity is. It's on what the Lord calls me, what he says I am in the word. One word to sum up the CFNI experience is love. You're a world changer. Come get trained. Thank you for joining our live stream today. We are excited to spend the next few minutes with you. 
Feel free to leave a like or comment throughout this video and follow us at CFNI on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future CFNI videos. For those watching on Facebook, don't forget to like this page and enable post notifications to stay informed and keep up with daily CFNI content. Enjoy the live stream. Thank you for joining our live stream today. We are excited to spend the next few minutes with you. Feel free to leave a like or comment throughout this video and follow us at CFNI on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future CFNI videos. For those watching on Facebook, don't forget to like this page and enable post notifications to stay informed and keep up with daily CFNI content. Enjoy the live stream. CFNI is a place where you can really learn what community is. I really had no good idea of what it meant to have an intimate relationship with God. Ever since I've been here, it's just been such a beautiful experience of like realizing and discovering who I am as a child of God and realizing how I can be an impact in my friends' lives and other people's lives and how my friends' lives have been an impact on me. You can learn what friendship is. You learn about your connection with God and your relationship with God. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about CFNI. We're just going to have them lower it and keep it where it is at, right? We're not going to allow it to stop what's happening here tonight. All right. Can we do that? Huh? <laughs> yeah, we're going to just let, let them lower it and we'll keep it there for the, for the night until they sort things out. All right, so come on in, guys. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on, let's give maintenance a big, a big hand for all of that. Yeah. You remember, <laughs> hey, you remember what I shared yesterday? It was yesterday when I said sometimes God doesn't change the environment. Sometimes he gives you the peace to deal with the environment. He doesn't always change it. So we're, make, we're leaving that. Oh, we have the peace. Okay. All right, do me a favor. Some of you guys are having so many conversations. Can, I, can you do this? Shh. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. 
I'm going to open up in prayer, and then the worship team will, will start. I just wanted to settle you guys. Don't be distracted by that. Father, we thank you for your wonderful presence in our midst tonight. We invite you, Lord God. We say, come and reign, come and dwell in this house. God, we thank you that you are the supernatural strength that we need. We thank you that you are the wind beneath our wings. God, we thank you that you are the day star. Lord, we look to you tonight. God, we thank you for your joy. We thank you for your love in this house. Lord, would you come and tabernacle with us, the God who lives, the God who dwells among his people. We say, fill this house with your presence tonight. Lord, rest upon us. Rest upon the speaker tonight. Lord, may your glory fall in this place like we have never experienced. Lord, may your presence rush in this room and wrap us in your arms, God, like we have never experienced. Father, we know the word says it is not by might and it is not by power, but it is by your spirit. So we say, Spirit of the living God, breathe upon us tonight. Breathe life. Breathe your presence upon us. And Lord, we just draw our hearts and we say, God, to you be all the glory tonight. Lord, we just capture this one moment again. We just capture tonight another time to worship you. Another time to gaze on your face. Another time to love you. God, this one more time. Lord, we don't take it for granted. Lord, we seize this moment and we say you are our beloved. We say you are our delight, God. We say you are everything to us. Lord, we lift our eyes to you tonight above every trial, above every situation, above every circumstance. And we say, God, we love you. We love you. We love you tonight. Can you just lift your hands right where you are and just say, God, I love you. Come on, before we begin singing a song, just say, God, I love you. I love you because you first loved me. Come on, just whisper your love to him right here. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord God.
thank you, Jesus, because you are the Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Right before we go into praise, I would like you to find three people and just give them a warm hug. Although it doesn't feel like Texas these days, would you just give them a warm hug and say we're getting ready to worship and to praise our Abba Father? I give you permission as the worship leader tonight to squeeze them. Make sure they get every little bit of juice that you have in you. That the love of Jesus will be transmitted into their hearts. Even if there's one person, I want to charge you with boldness. Go to that person who's seated on their own, who looks like they don't want to be disturbed, and just give them this love. Is everyone touched today? We're gonna praise Jesus and dance into the river. Now there's room here. And before we start, would you now give him a mighty shout of praise? Let's do it. Free! 
everything. And for us to worship Jesus together, we have one praise song. And because this is Christ for the Nations, we wanted to have an African style type of praise. Is that okay with y'all? Okay. Okay. The chorus is very, very simple. And it goes, can I have a click? Just a click. Okay. So it goes, Hale, Hale, Hale. No! 
from different nations and different continents and we get to worship you. Would you not lift your hands and sing to Jesus your own song? It doesn't need to be in English. In whatever language you want to do, come on. Just sing to him. Oh Jesus, je te loue, je t'adore. Nul n'est comme toi. Personne n'est semblable à toi. Tu es unique en ton chant, Jésus. Mon âme te loue, mon âme t'adore. Mon âme t'exalte, tu es ma Oh, quel plaisir, quel honneur. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship the Lord a little right here. Can I have some monitors, please? I can't hear anything up here. Some monitors. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Such a beautiful anointing in this place. Come on, just sing your song to him right here. Just minister to him upon the keys. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Jesus, thank you, Lord. We're not rushing this beautiful moment. Come on, just love on Jesus. Just love on Jesus. Jesus, we love you, Lord God. We love you.
your presence, God. We bask in your presence, Jesus. encourage someone tonight, please come before we move on tonight. Because sometimes somebody just wants to hear that God has done it for you. And you know my point. If he has done it for you, he can do it for me. Sometimes we just need to hear that encouragement. 
So three years ago, I, I suffered from severe mental illness and it actually led me to get put into a mental hospital for my state. And I remember driving my car one night in a 40 and I was going over 100 miles an hour with my eyes closed because the enemy was in my head telling me that if I would just drive a little bit quicker and close my eyes for a little bit longer, maybe that would be considered more faith. And Jesus Christ saved my life that night in that car. And I remember being in the hospital over Christmas and New Year's and I was away from my family. My mom was praying for me, you can only imagine, right? And to think what God has done with me in three years. If anybody in here suffers from mental illness or you feel like you, feel like you can't get your thoughts straight, you suffer from anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, just thoughts in your head that aren't quite there, aren't quite on par, I wanna encourage you to get inside of the Word of God and let it transform your mind. Don't even just, don't just get it into your mind, get it into your heart. Because when it gets into your heart, it will mold you and transform you and shape you into a whole different person who you could never become in your own strength. And that is what Jesus Christ has done for me in my life in these past three years. And if that encourages you, I pray that it does. So thank you. The Holy Spirit made a change in my heart when it comes to my attitude. I used to think, used to think that things like attitude didn't really matter. Not something you concern God with. And the one that I had was one of laziness. Very careless, very lazy. And so last night at around 3, like 28 in the morning, I just kind of woke up randomly. I didn't know why. The Holy Spirit just shook me out of bed. I thought it was just thirsty, I went to get water. And I couldn't go back to sleep. And the Holy Spirit just kept warning me and kept telling me, there's something evil surrounding you. Something dark coming after you. So I said, okay, okay, I'm gonna start praying. Praying against this Holy Spirit, what is it? And it told me, it's the spirit of laziness. And you overlooked it your whole life. But it's inherently demonic by nature because it's holding you back from reaching all the things that I have for you and you're stopping yourself short. It's not just a mood, it's not just something you feel from time to time, it is inherently demonic. And I want you to speak against it now before it continues to stop everything that could have happened, but didn't because you were in the way of it. So I just started praying in the name of Jesus. I take full authority against this. I bind it in Jesus' name and I rebuke it right now. <clears throat> Next morning, I wake up, it's time to go to school. I don't want to leave the bed. I feel this weight and this heaviness in my body draining me like never before. Say, no, just skip the clock. Five more minutes. You don't got to go there. You don't got to get there in time. I just only want to get here for worship. But the Holy Spirit just gives me a vision. It's kind of personal. I won't share it. But he showed me all the promises that he has for me. And he says, now you reach them because there's nothing holding you back anymore. And that's what you gave me. testimony and I was like oh gosh um, when I was 16 I was very suicidal um, I attempted an overdose one night and or not one night during the day at school and it didn't work and then the day went on and I left school and all the medication that I had taken started kicking in and I started like seeing things, snakes, blood, demonic stuff. And it was the scariest thing in my life. And at that time I knew who God was, but I wasn't sure if he was real and I wasn't sure if he was good. And later that night, I'm still tripping out on all the medication, trying to keep it together, trying to not show my family that like 
I'm losing it. I just attempted overdose. I was trying to just act like everything was normal. And I just out of nowhere just start seeing everything good. Everything good in my life, everything that was worth living for. And I was like, oh no, oh no, like I'm gonna die and like I have all this on me. And I just like I was like, God, if you're real, like if you even care about me and if you're real and if you're good, if you are what they say you are at school, if you're good, then you won't let me die. Like you will save me. If there's any purpose to me being on this earth, I won't die. And I didn't die, but um, <laughs> but um the amount of medication I took that night should have sent me into a coma that night. And I ended up, I stayed up the whole night just staring at the ceiling, being like, God, please heal me, God, please, like just crying. And then at like 7 a.m. I just felt like, like just leave everything in my body. And I felt so like sober. My mind was so calm. And I went to school, like, like nothing happened. And yeah, that was the night God saved my life. So if you're struggling, like God sees you even when you're at your lowest at night, God is with you and he sees you and he will answer your cry and you're not alone and talk to someone if you need help. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Whoa, just a wonderful time. Just thank you guys, worship team, so much. I'm not saying for you to leave, but I'm saying thank you. There's such a sweet anointing in this place. Me, I love to worship, you know. I just want to linger in this place. It's like, you don't even want to move on from this. You love, you love the presence? You love, yeah, somebody's like, yeah. <laughs> we love the presence of God. And you know me, Bano. I don't even, when you sense the presence like this, I don't want to rush out of it. I don't want to rush out of it. So... Thank you guys so much for lingering. We appreciate that. And just resting. Sometimes you just need to rest in the presence of God. Just rest, recline. You've been hearing me the last two weeks saying that because I, I sense that. Nina, so good to see you. Everybody, Nina, oh my God, good to see you. Anyway, she used to work here at CFNI. and i Awesome woman of God. Thank you so much for coming, Nina. We appreciate you. Come on, let's give Nina a big love tonight. <laughs> Nina. She's a worshiper too. She knows what I'm talking about. It's true. We are, we are, we are blessed. I'm going to get out of the way quickly, but thank you, worship team. I appreciate you guys. Um, tonight, before we transition to the word, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we want to end tonight with giving day. I know we normally take a T&E offering, but we want to end with the giving day. We have raised over 30,000, I think 13. $30,950, something of the sort like that. So if you're watching online tonight and if you are here and you haven't given to our giving day, today is our second annual giving day where we raise finances to provide scholarships for five students, sorry, for five applicants from five countries around the world. This is how we give back. Do we have that slide? Can we have that slide, please? So if you're watching, we're encouraging you to give tonight. Uh, it is giving day at cfni.org. Giving day at cfni.org. And I repeat, how many of you guys have given? You're in here, you have given to giving day. All right. Wave your hand, let me see if you have given to giving day. All right, what about those of you who haven't raised your hands? All right, so I challenge you and give. You've heard me. Give at your level. All right, give at your level. So it's easy. Pull out your phones if you want to do that. Give back. God has blessed you. So it's givingday.cfni.org. Let's do this tonight. Are you guys doing well? Thank you, thank you. All right, look at somebody beside you. Give them a big smile and say, you're blessed to be here tonight. One guy just leaned into a girl's shoulder. He's like, all right, somebody, somebody's in love. He, <laughs> he just did this. All right. Mm, thank 
you, Jesus. All right, let's do this. If you need an envelope, please. Because I know they're giving out the envelopes. If you need an envelope, please. Just wave your hands. But if you want to do it online, you're welcome to do it online. You guys sound so good. All right, I have a video to play, so you guys have to take me out of this place. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play a video. Just sit back, relax, and watch this video, and then I'll introduce the guest speaker. A really good friend, he was the guy that would help me to walk in my first steps in my faith. We started dating, and he became my husband. We married when I was 25, but when I was 27, he died. So it was a real struggle for me because I wasn't expecting that it was something suddenly. My life just changed in a moment. My name is Fernanda. I'm from Criciúma, Santa Catarina, Brazil. I came from a Catholic family. Since a child, I was taught to ask and seek for God, but I didn't see they live in biblical life at all. At some point on my journey, when I was a teenager, uh, many questions came to my head, and I was like, um, how can this be true uh, in the in the world? Because I was not seeing this in my family. We moved to Brasilia. When I was there, I met a friend at university. She prayed for me for about four years for me to have an encounter with the Lord. I remember the day that everything shifted. We just met in the middle of the hall at university. She was telling me the things that she was going through. I remember me thinking like, man, how can it be? Like at that point, it seems that her life is worse than mine. And she's telling me all of this with that smile. And it was a moment when everything was like, I had like this illumination moment. And today I know that was the Holy Spirit just opening my eyes. So next time she invited me to go to church, I said yes. So when I was 22 years old, I properly, formally accepted Jesus as the savior of my life. Together with her, I had a friend that I met at university. He would go with me like the whole first year of my conversion to help me to be firm on the Lord. And it was really special. This friend actually, became my husband. We married when I was 25, but when I was 27, he died. It was really difficult for me. I had anxiety, I had depression, I had panic attacks. That low point was the, really, the very thing that changed all my life. I remember me struggling with my faith and my knowledge of the Lord, and I remember me like, on, in my in my room, like by myself, just grabbing the Bible and hitting on my head and saying, Jesus, this needs to be true. This needs to be true, because if this is true, I know that you are here. I know that you changed the situation for better. And it was really difficult. Um, it's painful to remember sometimes. By the end of this year, I remember that the Lord showed me a prayer room in Brazil. I saw that they had one week courses. So I did my enrollment for two of those courses. At that point, I used to teach on the public school and the Lord was so clear, like, grab all your things, you're going there, you're not coming back to Brazil anymore. So your time here is done. I didn't know, but it was the very beginning of the Lord calling me to ministry, actually. While I was in the prayer room, I had a friend that one night just came to pray for me. In the end of the prayer, um, she just told me that she saw a clock in a countdown, and that countdown was for me to be sent. She asked me if I ever heard about Sephaniah at the point. So I didn't know about Sephaniah and did some research on that for the first time. I talked to some people at CFNI at the point through emails, and I started doing my enrollment. It took me three years to come here, but I'm so glad that I made it and that the Lord opened the door for me. Being a student here at CFNI is like molding my character, is making me grow in faith, is making me grow in devotion, and especially in the knowledge of the Lord. Which I could say to you guys that are watching this video is if you are struggling with depression, with anxiety, with trauma, the Lord is able to heal you. I can 
can testify because he healed me. It's been awesome to be able to be here and just look behind and see the difference that being the Lord in my life has done. So I would invite you guys just to come to Seth and I and know more about the Lord and know more about the Bible. Just let him heal you and develop you in your faith and your devotion. Awesome. Well, tonight I have the privilege and the pleasure of introducing to you Pastor Nate Smith. He's a grad. <laughs> you have fan you are fans here. He's a graduate of Christ for the Nations. He's one of the campus pastors for Trinity Church in Cedar Hill. God has been using him in Dallas right here. He's young. But I tell you, I know him. I know him when he was a student. Knew him when he was a student here also. He's young. But when I tell you, being used of God has nothing to do with your age. So tonight, I want you to receive him. His beautiful wife is here, Rebecca, and their newborn baby. Would you stand with me and let's welcome to Christ for the Nations, Pastor Nate Smith. Go for it. Oh, come on, give it up for Jesus. No, come on, you can do better than that. Can we give it up for Jesus? The man that hung on Calvary for us. Can you just keep giving him hallelujah praise right now? Lift his name, shout his name. Jesus, you are worthy. We don't want to do this without you. All of this means nothing if you're not in the room. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. All right. What's up, CF and I? Hey, before I get started, um, I just want to take a moment to honor Kiplin and the Lindsay family for having me here. Um, it's a full circle moment. I remember just a few years ago sitting in the seats you guys are sitting in, so... Thank you. How many of you guys are grateful for the Lindsay family to, to create a space? Can we just give it up for them? To create a space for the Holy Spirit and for God to just rest his head here in Oak Cliff. Um, Kiplin already mentioned it, but my beautiful wife is with me today. I believe there's a picture of us. Uh, they want to put that up. This is my beautiful wife. Her name is Rebecca. Mi esposa es mexicana. That's all I know how to say. That's all I know how to say. So I got to keep working because soon my daughter's going to be able to speak Spanish and then they're going to talk stuff about me behind my back. Um, and then we just had our brand new newborn, Lydia Grace. If there's a picture of that. She is our miracle girl. She was due September 14th but decided to come early. She came at 33 weeks and was born at four pounds, one ounce. Four pounds, one ounce. The doctors say that um, babies are not supposed to breathe on their own until they're 36 weeks developed. Well, Lydia was born at 33 weeks and never needed once any oxygen, any breathing machine. She has breathed on her own fully since she was born. So give it up for Jesus for that. It's an honor to be here. Um, how many of you guys are ready for the word? I know at 9 o'clock, um, KFN, if you guys have parents in the KFN office, um, if you have kids over there, you guys are free to run. I now have a whole new understanding of what that means. Our daughter just left us an explosive surprise right before we walked out today. So. Uh, if you need to leave, feel free to leave. You won't hurt my feelings. Let's get into the word. Uh, we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 38. 38. Uh, to give you some context of the passage we're reading, uh, Jesus and his disciples, they are traveling on their way to Jerusalem. And Jesus had just shared the famous story of the Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan, and we're going to pick up in verse 38 of Luke chapter 10, and it reads like this. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him, welcomed him into her home. Her sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. 
But Martha was distracted. Say distracted. Distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. The Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. Say details. There is only one thing, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. Say discovered. And it will not be taken away from her. It will not be taken away from her. I have three points if you guys are taking notes today. Three points. Do you also do TNE quizzes? Take notes. Take notes. Uh, three, three points. Point number one, remove all distractions. Remove all distractions. Point number two, Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about the details. And point number three, discover God's voice. Discover God's voice. Point number one, look to your neighbor, say, remove all distractions. And that was good, but look to your other neighbor, and this time emphasize the word all. Say, remove all distractions. Remove all distractions. I gave my life to Jesus when I was just four years old. I remember vividly I was sitting in my preschool Sunday school class. I could not tell you what Bible story we listened to. I just remember sitting at the table eating my snack, animal crackers and lemonade. There is something on those animal crackers and lemonade. I wasn't one of those weird ones that dipped my animal crackers in the lemonade, though. Um, Give my life to Jesus when I was four years old. I was sitting there eating snack, and my preschool teacher had came up to me, and just randomly, I said, Nate, you know, if you're ever afraid, you can just say, in Jesus' name, fear go away. And that was it. I shrugged my shoulders like any four-year-old would, and I went back to eating my snack. That night... Just like any other four-year-old, I was terrified of the dark, and all my lights in my room were on, and I was laying in bed on my back, and I didn't know then, but I know now, the Holy Spirit brought to remembrance what my teacher had told me, and I remember saying, all right, God, I'll try it, so I got out of bed, walked over to the light switch, shut it off, and immediately this fear came over me, and I remember the words my teacher told me to say, and I said, in Jesus' name, fear go away. And at that moment, this supernatural peace came over me. And from that day forward, I knew that Jesus was real. I knew that Jesus was real. Now, I gave my life to Jesus when I was four, but I really became sold out for Jesus when I was around 17 years old. See, when you grow up a little bit and in your teenage years, your teenage issues are a lot worse than just being afraid of the dark. And so as I was going through life, like most of us have, um, I was in a really dark place, and uh, I joined my friend uh, to visit his church one weekend, around 17 years old, and um, I went up for an altar call at the end of service, and for the first time, someone was used, in, that I can remember, someone was used uh, in the words of knowledge and the gifts of prophecy and began to speak over my life. And um, from that day forward, I said, Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I was sold out for Jesus. How many of y'all are sold out for Jesus? I know where I'm at. I know I'm at CFNI. Sold out for Jesus. I was sold out to Jesus. My senior year, I went on a mission trip to the city of San Francisco, California. I got some people from San Francisco. So, um, went on a mission trip, and at the last day of the mission trip, they began to talk about this nine-month school of ministry they had available. I went back home. I'm from Michigan, by the way. I didn't mention that. I'm from Michigan. Um, Grew up, born and raised in Michigan. I was on my mission trip. They talked about this nine-month school of ministry, and I decided that that was something I felt God was leading me to do. And so um, right at the end of the summer, I gathered everything I had, 
and I moved all the way across the country to the inner city of San Francisco. And where I was at specifically is this district called the Tenderloin District. And in the Tenderloin District, there are 7,000 homeless people in one square mile. And in that same square mile, there are 4,000 children living in government homes, government housing. So ministry was like a gold mine in the Tenderloin District. Everything you could think of that you could do in ministry, you could do in the Tenderloin. So shortly I began volunteering in the kids' ministry. I began volunteering in the youth. We had a kindergarten through eighth grade private Christian school that was free for all the kids in government housing. What we did was travel from church to church around the country, and we raised funds so that the kids who couldn't afford Christian education could come and be a part of our school. What happened when we did that was a lot of the people that live in the Tenderloin District are from different ethnicities or different backgrounds, and a lot of them grow up in Buddhist homes or Hindu homes. And because our school was the only school in the Tenderloin District, a lot of children that grew up in Buddhist homes and Hindu homes came to our Christian school. And so children began giving their life to Je for Jesus. Look to your neighbor and say, sold out. Still, at the end of two, my, the two years that I was in San Francisco, there was still this void I was feeling. There was still this thing that I was missing. And when we look at this passage, we see that Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. And when we think of distractions, we often think of the devil tempting us, or we think of some sin in our life, or we think of ungodly relationships that are holding us back from the call of God. Those are real, and those need to be removed too. But Martha wasn't being tempted by the devil. And Martha wasn't sinning, and Martha wasn't doing anything ungodly. She was actually serving Jesus. She was doing something for him. And I would just propose to you that if we're not careful in our Christian walk, we can get distracted by doing things for God. We can get distracted by doing things, sometimes things that he's never even asked us to do. See, the gospel is about living with God rather than for God. Let me say it another way. You could spend your whole life doing things for Jesus and miss out on being with him. The whole reason he died for us was to be reunited with us. The gospel gives you confidence to sit at Jesus' feet and not rush to go do something for him. Don't let ministry become an idol in your life. Don't let your calling distract you from the one who called you. Don't let your calling distract you from the one that called you. See, I don't think Christianity struggles with working for their salvation as much anymore. I think the church has done a good job saying, hey, listen, you're not getting to heaven on your works. You're getting to heaven on the work of Jesus, right? We all believe that. What I do think is that some of us believe our acceptance is still earned by what we do for him. What do I mean by that? So often followers of Christ lack confidence to get into God's presence. They feel like they need to go and do all of these things and then bring them to Jesus' feet so that he would accept you. When in reality, it's the complete opposite. God wants you to get in his presence so he can show you what he's done for you not so you can show him what you've done for him. God wants you to get into his presence so that he can show you the freedom that's yours. He wants you to get into his presence so that he can show you the healing that's available to you. He wants you to get into his presence so he can show you the redemption that he paid for, so that he can show you the love that he has for you. Remove every distraction, including ministry, in your life and get to the feet of Jesus. Spend time with him. He is the only person that can fill your voids. It's the only person that can fill your voids. Look to your neighbor and say, remove all distractions. Point number two, don't worry about the details. Don't worry about the details. I love the hood. 
If you know anything about me, I love the hood. One of, the fa- one of my favorite things about the hood is, one of my favorite things about the hood is seeing all the different hustles that they try to come up with. Okay, you got the typical, hey, can I get money for some food? Or hey, can I get money for the bus? And then you have those hustles that you don't really think are ever gonna happen in your life. See, this past Sunday after service, I noticed that my keys were missing. Notice that my keys, my car keys were missing. Now, if you know me, if you really know me, you know that this is not an uncommon thing to happen. My keys and my wallets go missing all the time, and oftentimes my wife is following behind me with them in her hands and telling me, you forgot these. This time, my wife wasn't with me because we have a brand new newborn, and so she's been staying at home taking care of her. I noticed after service that where I put them before, they weren't anymore. After looking for about 30 minutes, I realized that there was a possibility they had been taken by somebody. So I called AAA with nothing else to do, and I can say this, my dad's worked at AAA for 22 years. AAA sucks, okay? If you are ever stranded, don't call AAA. They will not come and do what you need, okay? Now this time, I called AAA, and honestly, they did pretty good. They showed up in about 45 minutes, and then they went right back to being AAA and told me they showed up with the wrong tow truck. I didn't even know there, was a different, there were different kinds of tow trucks. I mean, to me, it's just a tow truck moves the car, but apparently there's a flatbed and a wheel lift, things you'll learn in life. So they tell me that I have to call back and order another tow truck. So I call back, and they're like, all right, uh, in eight to 10 minutes, they'll call you and tell you when they're on their way. Well, I got nothing else to do, and we're at church. Cowboys and Eagles are playing, so I sit down and start watching the game, and I realize an hour and a half has gone by, and I still haven't gotten a phone call back. So I called AAA, and I'm still being a pretty decent Christian about this, and I'm telling them, hey, um, you guys told me you would be here or call in a, a, like about eight to 10 minutes. It's now been an hour and a half. Um, you want to let me know what's happening here? And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. We'll call back in five to 10 minutes. Another hour goes by. I call them, and this time... I'm not super Christian about them. They would not be able to tell that I was a pastor. I was very frustrated. At this point, my wife's calling me. I hear my baby, my baby screaming on the phone in the background, and she's like, where are you? She can't come get me because I have the car seat in the car that needs to be towed, and it's just a mess. I'm getting frustrated. So after talking to AAA on the phone, I get off the phone. They assure me that the tow truck will be there in 20 minutes. As soon as I get off the phone, lo and behold, one of the guys in the community shows up on a bike. And he says, I heard there was a $10 reward for lost keys. And he holds up my keys. And I'm like, really, man? First of all, who told you there was a $10 reward? There were three of us that knew the keys were missing, and nobody said that. Secondly, I saw you come in after service, get a plate, and leave, and before you came in, the keys were there, and after you left, they weren't. It was amazing to me that this man would spend four hours of his life for $10, for $10. And so I just politely grabbed the keys, put them in my pocket, and started to walk away, and he said, do you think I could get that reward? Y'all, I almost lost my salvation. I hope you know that's a joke. You can't lose your salvation. I, I almost lost my salvation. I turned around him, to him and smiled, the fakest Christian smile I could, I could wander up, and I said, brother, your reward is in heaven. God bless you. And I turned around, and I walked to my car, and I drove home. All right, Nate, what on earth does this have to do with Mary and Martha? You see, Martha was upset because she thought what needed to happen wasn't happening. 
And just like Martha, I was so worried and upset that AAA wasn't showing up on the time they said they were gonna show up. When, the ba- when in reality, the best thing for me to do was to wait to get my keys back. And I wonder how many times we're frustrated calling on God because we want something to happen a certain way or at a certain time. God, why hasn't this miracle come to pass yet? God, why is this person not been healed yet? God, why has this bill not been paid yet? Because you don't have a job. No, he doesn't say that. God, God, why, why is this relationship not reconciled? Why are you not doing what I'm asking you to do? When all along, God's saying, wait, be patient. It may not come how you want it to come. It may not come when you want it to come, but it will come. It will come. Look to your neighbor and say, it will come. If it, would have had hap- if it would have happened my way, if AAA would have been there with the right tow truck at the right time and I got home, it would have been so much worse for me, y'all. Do you know how much those little car keys are now? That thing's like $250 to replace that car key. Plus, I had other keys on there that needed to be replaced that was worth up to $300. Now, it would have been quicker. I would have gotten there faster. I wonder how many of us are willing to settle for the quicker way but miss out on God's way. Because when it comes from God, it will be better than you could ever imagine. Ephesians 3.20 says this, to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in us. God's way is the best way. Look to your neighbor and say, God's way is the best way. Say, don't worry about the details. Point number three, discover God's voice. Discover God's voice. We read in this passage, Jesus looks at Martha and he says, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all of these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. It will not be taken away from her. I learned this lesson in the end of my time in San Francisco to do life with God and not for him. And so when I moved to Dallas to attend CFNI, I knew that whenever I got back into ministry, whatever I was going to do, I was going to make sure that I did it with God, that I made sure I was gonna do it with God and not just for him. Around my second semester, I got offered a job at Trinity as a children's pastor at our Fair Meadows campus. And um, I remember the first week I was on staff there, I had went and had a lunch by myself at this famous restaurant in South Dallas um, known for their Cajun seafood. Have y'all ever had Cajun seafood? If, If you have not had Cajun seafood, let me just put you on real quick. It is my favorite food. It is so good. Um, there's a place in South Dallas called Ann Irene's Kitchen. If you can, go there. It's the best. So I'm eating at Ann Irene's Kitchen, and I, uh, I'm praying about this next season that God has for me. And the Holy Spirit reminded me that I told him I was going to do ministry with him this time. And so... I just remember praying while I was eating lunch, saying, God, what's what's something I can do with you that has nothing to do with my responsibility as a children's pastor? I walked outside after I finished up eating and I saw 15 homeless dudes across on the street. I was like, I can do that. So every Friday or Saturday, I would begin to make meals and start on one end of the street and end on the other end of the street. And I'd pass out meals or food or whatever I could afford that week. And I would pray for the people on the street. There was this lady I would run across every, every time I was there, and she never wanted food, but she always wanted prayer for her and her husband. And so I continued to pray, and after about five or six months of doing this, uh, the Lord gave me a dream while I was sleeping, and in this dream, I was sitting at this huge table with every person that I had been passing out meals to. 
And I woke up, and the Holy Spirit said, not everyone knows they have a seat at my table. Show them and teach them. So I'm just a children's pastor at a Fair Meadows campus over here in Duncanville, and I don't have a building in South Dallas. I don't have anything over in the Fair Park community, but there's a lot of empty, vacant lots. And I got tables and chairs. And so I began inviting people every week to this Um, Thanksgiving meal I was going to put on. Thanksgiving was around the corner. I figured that's a perfect time to get everybody around the table. And so we put on, in 2019, we put on our very first Thanksgiving event. And I was inviting people, and I would come across this lady who never wanted food but always wanted prayer. And I invited her, and she said, well, where are you going to do it at? I told her, probably in this empty lot. She said, why? I was like, "Mm, you got a better idea? She's like, yeah, why don't you use this bar over here? I was like, all right, who do I talk to? She's like, me, me and my husband are the owners of the bar. You can use our bar. We'll shut down for the day. You can come in, preach the gospel, feed the homeless, whatever you want to do. So 2019, we fed 50 homeless people, and nine of them gave their life to Jesus. Yeah, I give it up to Jesus. And during this time, during this time, I mean, for those of you who think you're going to get into ministry and make money, I'm just going to tell you right now, you're probably called to something else. Um, I was barely making it through by making my school bill. Whatever I had left was paying for these meals and gas in my car. And um, my pastor actually, not out of control or anything else, but other than concern for me, pulled me into his office and told me to stop. He told me to stop doing what I was doing because he was concerned that I wasn't, I wasn't being wise. Now, I want you to hear what I'm saying, not what you think I'm saying. I am not telling you to dishonor your leaders in your life. I am not telling you to take their advice and throw it out the window. God has put them in your life for a reason. So whatever advice they give to you, please, please chew on it, think on it, pray on it. But at the end of the day, there's one person we answer to. There's one person we answer to, and I knew that at the end of my life, I wanted to answer correctly to God. And so after praying about, it, that, praying about that, I continued uh, to do what I felt God was telling me to do. And then COVID hit, 2020 came around, we did another Thanksgiving outreach, and 100 people showed up. 13 of them gave their life to Christ. And whatever was happening, God was in it. And I remember looking to Miss Kathy, and Miss Kathy's here, by, by the way, tonight. Miss Kathy, can you stand up? Can you stand up? She's shy. She don't want to show up. Yeah. I won't tell you her age, but her and her husband have lived a long life, and they have chosen to give up their business on Sundays for us to have church every single week there. So we honor you, Miss Kathy. Thank you. So 100 people showed up, 13 of them gave their life to Christ and began to talk to Miss Kathy afterwards and I said, why, why are we only doing this once a year? We should do this like every week. She looked at me and she said, Pastor Nate, please turn my bar into a church, please, please turn my bar into a church. And so we began to remodel in March of 2021, we had our very first church service, and we've been going ever since at Trinity Fair Park. Shout out to all my Trinity Fair Park people. That's my family right there. What I believe Mary discovered was the importance of what God says. Mary was concerned with what God was saying more than what she was concerned about what the culture was saying or what the culture deemed acceptable. See, culture set a standard for Mary and Martha to leave the presence of Jesus and begin cooking dinner. But Mary had discovered that what he says was more valuable than what culture says. So let's, let's just forget about the world's culture for a moment. We all know the world's culture is messed up right now. Let's just take a moment and talk about church culture. Church culture. See, The church culture will set standards that God wants to break sometimes as well. 
See, we have church in a bar in the most dangerous zip code of Dallas every single week. Church culture says, that's dumb. That's not going to work. You're never going to be able to pay the bills on homeless people's ties. You'll never be able to make a difference in their lives. Leave that for recovery programs. Right now, almost two years later, we're changing the community in ways we never thought was possible. This past weekend, we gave over 50,000 pounds of groceries away to the community. We saw over 400 cars drive through our grocery line and receive prayer and invitation to church. We, we saw over 100 children show up and have a bunch of fun and be invited to our every week on Saturday children's ministry. We, we sent out eight street evangelism teams and preached the gospel and prayed for people and passed out hot meals. We delivered, 300, we delivered food to 300 residents in Section 8 housing. Just This is all in one day, y'all. Served over 500 hot meals all out of our little church in a bar because God said. See, other church cultures might even say that it's demonic what we're doing. Why would you ever preach the gospel in the same room that alcohol and beer is sold? Well, <laughs> why wouldn't you first? <laughs> Um, now we have people coming into the bar asking for freedom from their addictions because God said. You see, our job as followers of Christ is not to concern ourselves with what the world says or with what culture says. Our job is to concern ourselves with what God says. We have to follow Mary's example. Find out what he says about your family. Find out what he says about your finances. Find out what he says about your health situation. Find out what he says about your career or your calling. Find out what he says about your ministry. Concern yourself with what he says. In order for you to know what he says, you need to know his voice. And in order for you to know his voice, you must spend time with him more time with him than you do with the culture. See, your Christian activities do not equate to a relationship with God. So just because you're spending all of your time in Christian activity or church culture does not mean that you're learning his voice. You're, that, that is completely separate than your relationship with God. Get in your room, shut your door, and sit at his feet. Sit at his feet. We have to follow Mary's example. Look to your neighbor and say, remove all distractions. Look to your other neighbor and say, let me tell you what to say, hold on. <laughs> Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about the details. Look to your other neighbor, no, stop talking to your neighbor, talk to yourself. Say, discover God's voice. Discover God's voice. Want to, if the worship team would come up. Um, during worship, I, there was a man down here in the front. He had a red and black flannel on, white Converse shoes, black curly hair, glasses. Where you at? Yeah, come on up to the front. Or just stand in the aisle, that's fine. What's your name, man? Victor? You're, um... Are your parents in the ministry? Are, you, are your family in the ministry at all? Any, some family in the ministry? Um, when you were worshiping, I felt like God wanted to release you from some expectation that either family has placed on you or you've placed on yourself. That the, the thing that God has called you to is completely unique and you probably already know what it is and you've been second guessing whether that's from God or not. And I just wanna encourage you that God has a call on your life. He knows you by name. He knows who you are. He's known you since before you were in your mother's womb. And that, that every expectation that either you've placed on yourself or someone else has placed on you, I just wanna pray that that would be released from you tonight. Can you guys just extend your hands towards Victor? Lord, I thank you for Victor. I thank you for his life. I thank you, God, that you have... Um, such freedom for him tonight, freedom from expectation, freedom from limitations. God, I pray, Lord, that those dreams that you've placed deep inside of him, that you would begin to bring, bring to fruition, 
that you would begin to water them and plant, plant truths into them and, and that you would begin to surround him with the people that, that he needs to be surrounded by in order for that to happen. Lord, I, I see almost the picture of, of um, Moses with his arms up and Aaron and her are holding his arms and I just see that God is gonna surround you with the right people to hold up your arms and I just bless you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yes. I believe God wants to do a few things tonight. Uh, do an altar call, and there's a few different things I'm gonna ask, so um, if you would just listen closely. The first thing I believe God wants to do is, hold on, Zach, is your wife here as well? Can you guys stand up? I believe that you guys have been seeking God for clarity and what your next steps are, that God has brought you into this new season of marriage, and um, there's just this, not confusion like you don't know what you're doing, but this second guessing of you don't know what's to come. And I believe that you've been seeking him diligently, like I see this picture of both of you on your knees and on your face and praying and saying, God, we just wanna follow you. Whatever it looks like, we just wanna follow you. Whatever our family looks like in the future, we just wanna follow you. And I just wanna release to you tonight that God sees you and every step that he has for you, he's already ordered. He's already gone before you. And so I just wanna release you from any anxiety or worry about the future that he has you in the palm of his hands and you are exactly where he needs you right now. All right, in Jesus' name. There's a few things I believe God wants to do tonight. The first thing is I believe God wants to free the room from the idol of ministry. I believe that God wants to free the room from the idol of ministry. So if this is you, if you have fallen in love with doing things for God, but forgot what it's like to just be with him. You've been coming to CFNI and you are spending time in class and you're spending time in, in, um, at t and &E and in chapel and, and the GL, the GLOP, what do you call it? Gordon Lindsay House of Prayer, wherever it is, that you've been spending time, you've been doing these things, but you're not at the feet of Jesus at the same time. So if that's you, if you say, hey, I have this idol of ministry, and I just wanna lay it down at Jesus' feet tonight. I don't wanna worry about the details that are to come. I don't wanna worry about how I'm gonna get there. I don't wanna stress my whole time here about what my calling is. If that's you and you wanna lay that idol down, can you come to the front on this side of the altar? Come to the front. Yeah, give it up for them for being brave to come to the front. So here's what I want you to do. I'm, I'm gonna call the next group of people up, but while I'm calling the next group of people up, I want you to imagine that dream of ministry that you have, a thing that you wanna do that's so big for Jesus. I want you to place that thing in the palm of your hands. I want you to get on your knees and place it on the feet, in front of the feet of Jesus. And I'm gonna come pray for you guys in just a little bit. The next group of people I wanna pray for is I wanna pray for the people who are anxious, who are worried about the future, who are focused on the details. You're focused on what God's gonna do and when's he gonna do it and if that's you, if you're worried about what God's doing in your life or when he's gonna do it, come to the front, come to the front. Anxiety is gonna be taken off of you tonight. Freedom is coming to you tonight. And then I've, I've never done this before, but we're following Jesus and sometimes that looks just like stepping out in faith. And I, I I think I heard this, I could be completely wrong, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Is there a guy by the name of Jonah here? Jonah. Jonah. Anyone here named Jonah? Okay, the other name I heard was Rachel. Is there a Rachel here? 
Rachel. Okay, come, come to the front. One second. Can you guys extend your hands towards Rachel? Lord, I thank you for Rachel. I thank you that you have big plans for Rachel. I see, Rachel, that you're sitting on this, this rug. It's like super colorful rug. And all around you are children. Children from different generations. Children from different nations. And all around you... They're, they're, they're like almost sitting on their knees with their elbows on the ground and their, their hands on their chin. Like they're, they're leaned in to what you're saying. And I believe that God's gonna give you an anointing to teach the next generation. To teach him, teach them about who he is. Not teach them about stories in the Bible. Not teach them just about these things that happened in the past. But you're, gonna, you're going to be used by the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to the next generation. I mean, I see this not just in America, but in nations around the world, specifically Africa. I see you sitting on this colorful African rug where you are just speaking to these children. I believe that God's even going to give you the anointing to speak their language so that they can understand you. And I just release that over you. Rachel, I, I pray, Lord, that you would... Um, that you would release this gift to her, that you would release this anointing to her. God, I pray, Lord, that although she's been called, although she's been given these gifts, that she would never leave the place of your feet, that she would never leave the place of your presence, that everything she has would be poured out of the time that she spent with you. God, I bless her in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, those who are struggling with anxiety, those who are struggling with anxiety, um, I just want to exhort you guys. Is that okay? There's this thing in the Bible we call exhortation. It, it's just, it, it means to build you up, to lift you up. Oftentimes, anxiety comes out of this place of lack of trust. This is not to condemn you and say, you guys aren't trusting God. This is not what that is. But what it is, is God's wanting to remind you, am I not trustworthy? Have I not been faithful to you? Have I not brought you out of the darkest spots? Have I not led you to where you are now? Have I not been faithful? If I've been faithful Remind yourself of those times that I've been faithful. That when you're sitting in the face of adversity or in the face of anxiety or the face of, uh, uh, of, of confusion and, and you're looking at your future and you get filled with anxious thoughts, would you meditate on the things I've done before? There's in the Bible we see that God leads people to, to put markers to remind the, the children of Israel what God did back then. And I believe there's markers in each one of your guys' lives where God has done something that was unexplainable, that, that you've been through something that you should not have gotten out of. And God is saying, remember that marker. And there sure will be markers to come, but remember that marker until you get to the next one. That your future is not in the hands of the enemy. Your future is not in the hands of this world, but your future is in the hands of your king. Your future is in the hands of your Savior. Your future is in the hands of the one who loves you. The one who loves you. Worship team, if you, if you have a song, you're more than welcome to come up and sing behind me. And those that are here that are laying down this idol of ministry where you've
begin to love the calling more than the one that's called you. There is so much grace for you. There is so much grace for you. There is grace for you to enter back into his presence. Not that he ever left you. Not that he ever abandoned you. There is grace for you to sit at his feet and remember his voice. Learn his voice. as you guys are standing here, just lift up, lift up a, vo- a song to the Lord. Those who have kids, you guys are released to go pick up your kids. Come on, this is my surrender right here, right now, where you're standing. Surrender all your anxieties. Surrender all your worries. Surrender your focus on the details. Surrender your idol, your, your ministry idol. Surrender whatever it is you have to surrender. Here's your, here's your moment.
my wife has a word for somebody, so I'm just going to give her the mic. Um, so I think the Lord pointed out um, like two, two couples to me. And the similar thing about these couples is that they're going to get married soon, both these couples. Um, they're both engaged. And the Lord um, pointed out Kat. That's my homegirl, <laughs> Kat. Um, and Carol. I know I saw Carol earlier. I don't know if she's in here. She in here? She left? Okay. She'll hear it later. <laughs> um, but Kat and Carol, I know they're both about to get married. And, and I just want to say that God's going to bless you. You know, you're going to see more blessings being married than, we, that, than you did being single. And why is that? Because God delights in godly marriages. God delights in in couples that seek him together, and couples that say, God, we're here to give you everything, you know, our, our lives, our finances, everything. So I just encourage you guys, Carol, um, her, what's his name, Josiah, and Kat, and your, um, I don't know his name, but to just seek God and, you know, seek God now before you get married for clarity for the future. You know, you're gonna see more blessings to come and you're gonna say, God, I, I could have never imagined this. I could have never pictured this in my head, God. I could have never imagined this life for me, but God's gonna bless you because he's gonna say, you decided to do it the right way. You decided to, to honor me in your, in your relationship. You decided to put me first. So I'm gonna bless you going forward. thing. I know this is Brides for the Nations. I, I found my other half here, um, but if you have a desire to get married, just raise your hand. I know that's not everyone wants to get married, and that's totally fine, but if you have a desire to get married, you know, I think, Ray, raise your hand. Just I think the world has put a lot of, like, bad stigma on marriage. Especially, you know, don't get married when you're young. Don't get married when you're tw in your 20s, you know. Live life, go travel, and that's totally fine. That's, there's nothing wrong with that life. But there's more blessings in a godly marriage than in singleness. So just raise your hand if you wanna get married and you have that desire. God, I pray for every single person here that you see their hearts, you see their desires, that you see their futures, and you know exactly who you have for them, Lord. I ask that you would give them clarity, that you would give them knowledge, that you would give them strength to keep going, God, that if they're feeling like, oh God, there's nobody for me, that you would say and you would whisper to their ears, there is somebody that I have for you. All you need to do is just seek me. All you need to do is just keep going and seek me and I will place that person in your life. You know, I grew up my whole life without a boyfriend. I waited 22 years to have my first boyfriend, and it's him right here. And so I, I don't say that to, to, you know, I don't say that for, for applaud. I don't say that to, to make myself look better. What I'm saying is I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to, to, to feel lonely sometimes to feel like, Lord, I, I don't know who you have for me. I know I want to get married. I know you have somebody for me. But it's possible to wait. It's possible to seek him. It's possible to, to put aside all distractions. These years that you're here at CFNI, I encourage you to seek him with all your heart. To seek him with all that you have because you're never going to have years like this where you know, you can seek God all day. You're gonna have a baby and you're gonna have a husband. You're gonna have to cook and take care of your baby. So seek him now and you know, he knows your desires. He knows your heart. So you don't have to worry about those things. You don't have to worry about finding a husband, finding a wife, because he knows those things. He knows the plans that he has for you. He knows you know, the ministries that he has for you, just seek him with all your heart. Just seek him. That's all I've got.
Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys, and thank you so much for having us. Um, I believe I'm going to invite Kipling back up to dismiss you guys. Um, don't you just love how God moves? I love diversity. I mean, he spoke with such gentleness. Nowhere near as loud as I get. <laughs> but the Spirit of the Lord was so rich upon him, right? Don't you just love how God ministers through us differently? Yes, I just love that. He is a roaring lion. He is. He's the conquering lion. But he's a gentle dove. And sometimes, I love when God sends people like this, you know, with that beautiful gentleness so that we see the other side of the kingdom. He's the lion and he's the lamb. I think I'm one of the lions in the kingdom. I roar, I get loud. But I love to see the gentleness, love to see the meekness, love to see the beautiful temperance. That aside, thank you. Powerful word, appreciate it. Thank you for that word. You know, just hits deep but gentle. It's a paradox, right? It, it caught deep, but it felt, like a, it felt like velvet was just being draped over your face. Very gentle. So thank you so much for coming, and thank you, Rebecca, for you know, allowing God to use you like that. Don't you just love to see young, a young couple being used by God? Yes. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yes. I remember when he came here as a student, I, I said to him one day, you look so much like Brad Pitt. He looks, he's like a younger version of Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah, he looks like Brad Pitt. All right, they're all, you guys know who Brad, Brad Pitt is, right? He has that. Doesn't he look like Brad Pitt? He does. He's just on the short side, but <laughs> uh, he's my friend. He's my friend. Okay, all right, don't lose it now. Okay. Um, <laughs> What's the, can we bless her tonight? What's the name of the lady? Miss Kathy. Can you stand, Miss Kathy? As a matter of fact, Miss Kathy, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Bring Miss Kathy right up here. What a miracle. What a testimony. Come on, you stand and celebrate this woman of God. What a blessing. Talk about, if you've ever heard me preach about divine connection. Come on, you, you know that. This is, and I love how God does it. A black woman, a white guy. An elder lady, a young white guy. Look at the dynamic. You are right. God has a way of kicking our stereotypes out of the window. God has a way of smashing the paradigms that we have created, the boundaries that we have created. Woman, man, black, white, young, old. Look at God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, he's one of ours. You know, to have heard this story, I met with him personally and we talked about it. And he, he told me so much about you, you know, how God has used you to be a blessing. So on behalf of the school here, we want to say a big thank you for allowing yourself to be used by God, to be a blessing to one of our students. This is my pastor. Pastor Nate is our pastor in Fort South Dallas. We're called by the name of Fair Park. And this is my pastor. And I must tell you all something. We are all here. How in the world did Kathy get a black preacher in South Dallas? You want to know how? Jesus. Jesus. How did we get a church in a bar? Jesus. When someone comes and you feel the spirit 
and you feel the presence of the Lord. And I think I scared myself more than I did him. I said yes. I said yes. I said yes. I said yes. When you feel the spirit of the Lord, you just turn loose. Do me a favor before, before she goes. Can you just stretch your hands towards her? Can I get three or four students just come and surround her? Let's just bless this lady. Can we do this tonight quickly? I know it's 920, but somebody talk about the fruit, the harvest that is coming out of this divine alignment, divine connection. Whoa. Father, we thank you for this gift, this gift that you have, that you have blessed Pastor Nate with, this gift that you have blessed this couple with. Lord, we thank you for the divine partnership. We thank you that you have used her, God, as you have positioned her for such a time as this. Lord, we bless her tonight. We bless her home. We bless her finance. We bless her marriage. We bless her. God, we bless the work of her hands. We bless her mind. We bless her body. God, that you would keep her in health. Lord, that you would download revelations. That you would release the power of God in her life like, like, like she has never experienced before. We declare a breakthrough in her life. God, every need that she has, that you would open up doors and bless her. Lord, we thank you. God, as you did for Cornelius who built a synagogue so that the Jewish people could worship. Lord God, as you have done it for Cornelius, you sent the fire of the Holy Ghost and you baptized Cornelius. Would you baptize this woman of God with fire in the name of Jesus? Baptize. We decree that her household shall be saved. We decree, God, that her generation shall shall be saved. Everything that is connected to this woman of God, we command it to come into divine alignment. Lord, release your wind. Release the wind of the Holy Ghost in her house. Release the wind of the Holy Ghost upon her children. We decree the favor of God to be upon her. In the name of Jesus, God, as she has done it for your people, do it for her house. Do it for her house. In the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise tonight. Miracle, favor. Go before her God. And make every crooked pathway straight. In the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory. Amen. Somebody give it up for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Nate. I can tell you. He's one of those Sif and I grads. That I am so proud of. Seriously, I am. And I, I, I don't think I've ever said this on the stage about, a, about a, a grad. I've met with him, talked with him. We've been friends. I am so, so proud of you. I just want to say that few people get into the trenches the way I see him get into the trenches. A lot of, a lot of people, they come here and they're excited about CFNI. But so many times I hear people just want to be on the stage. They just want to have a mic and be on the stage. He's in the trenches feeding people who, who are on drugs. People who don't even know if they're coming or going. People who have no sense of identity. Addiction. I mean, all sorts of craziness that he's dealing with. But the compassion, I'm saying this has to be God inside of him. And he's, how old are you, Nate? 24 this is an encouragement to you. 24. Hear me. There's a reason why I'm doing this. If God can do this in Nate and through Nate, surely he can do it in you and through you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Love you. Visit this church if you have time, all right? God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. See you guys tomorrow.